In this project, we want to create a color trend board, sort of a small poster uh, to just um, show, for example, in this case, um, fashion color trends for the fall collection. What we have here is we have a background image uh, that is slightly blurred and faded uh, to just kind of set the theme for a fall setting. We have a uh, large text uh, that is outlined and has a drop shadow to set it off against the background. We have two cutout images of um, fashion examples from the fall line. And then we sampled the colors in those images and created these color patches, these rectangular color patches. And um, we also made them match an existing Pantone standard color. So that is the project. It is an 11 by 17 inch image size. So let's get started by creating a brand new image in Photoshop, File New. And I'm going to call this for color trends. And I want to make sure here that the width is set to 11, not 11, 17 inches wide and 11 inches high. And the resolution I set to 200. So you may have different criteria, but if you want to create a brand new project and specify your final print size. This is uh, how you would do that. Click OK and it gives me a brand new empty Photoshop file. I'm going to switch over to my browser. Um, this is a window for Getty Images. Again, I would make sure that I'm signed in under my account. I have checked the premium access images only. And I did a previous search for just the word fall to give me some imagery that is fall related. I also used um, filters, for example, uh, no people and also idyllic to give me images that have just simply no people inside of them and also have sort of an, an idyllic uh, setting. The choice that I downloaded was this image here. So you would have to make sure that you download the premium access image itself. And uh, here I want to make sure that I'm downloading the largest available file since I'm creating a very large uh, display board here. So I've already done this. So I'm not going to do it again. Uh, I also did a search on just Google for um, fashion looks and one of them, for example, for Dolce & Gabbana. And uh, this is the image that I download. In order to download it, you don't want to just right click here. You want to click on the image and then also go here to the full size image so that you see the full resolution like this here. Here on this image, you can then right click and save the image as and save it to a folder that you want to collect all your imagery in. I've already done this, so I'm not going to do it again. And let's switch back to Photoshop. And what I want to do here is I want to place these images in order to incorporate them into my Photoshop collage. So under File, I go to Place. And I select my fall color image first for the background. Select Place. It will bring up this. Um, sizing dialog almost. I can zoom out just a little bit. So I want to make sure I size this and place it so that it covers my entire background. So I place it. It wants to snap to the edges. I hold down my shift key and I drag it until it's slightly larger than the actual background to make sure it covers the entire area. Press enter or click on this um, checkbox to commit to this transformation. I also want to place the other two images. Place, select here. I'm going to just size it down slightly like so. And then place the third image and 
I want to here size it so that it is roughly the same vertical size as the other image that I want to use here. So I'm happy with this. Of course, I don't want um, the rectangular images. I want to create a nice cutout of each one of those images. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And selecting the layer that I want to work on, in this case, the image that has the male model here, I use my Quick Select tool to create a selection by clicking on the inside and running my mouse over the area that I want to keep. And this may need some fine tuning. I'll let go of my mouse, I'll scroll down a little bit. You want to make sure you zoom in enough so that you can have enough detail to work with. So this is fairly good here for the outline. If you need to adjust your mouse or your brush size, use the left or right square bracket keys. I've selected a little bit more than I want. Option will turn on the subtract mode of the quick select tool and I can move in from the outside to remove any selections or any areas that I did not want to have selected. So this looks good. I click on the icon for add layer mask right next to the FX. Add layer mask will hide everything but the area that I have selected. I'm going to do the same thing to the other image here. Quick select tool. I start out in this resolution. And my brush size is smaller than the area that I'm trying to select. For example, it needs to be smaller than the legs. And I want the arms here. I need to zoom in a little bit to see a little better what I'm doing here. Just a little closer to the edge. You don't want to run over the edge of the area that you want to select because that confuses Photoshop. Again, it selected a little bit more than I wanted it to. Holding down the Option key, I can move in from the outside, and it generally does a nice job of adjusting the selection. Decrease the size, pressing the left square brackets key. Just fine-tuning just a little bit to make sure I'm getting a good selection of the hand and arm detail. I'm not going to worry about the little pieces in the middle here, although I do want to get rid of this area between the shoes here. So holding down the Option key, I can back up and fine-tune or remove this area from the selection until I get a good selection going here that covers only the area that I really want to keep. So let's say this is close enough for our purposes here. I zoom out a little bit and when I press again the layer mask button it adds a layer mask and hides everything else on that layer. Command clicking on the layer mask icon itself, or option clicking rather, allows you to see what the layer mask looks like. Everything that is white is visible, everything that is black is hidden. Command clicking actually selects that mask as a selection, as an active selection. I'm undoing my selection, pressing Command D. So this looks reasonable right now for a start. Uh, I'm going to fine tune this a little bit later. Um, I want to add a text element here. So I use my text tool, horizontal text tool. I click and drag out an area that I want my text to go into. The words that I want, or the word that I want to type is just fall. And by default, it starts out 
with a certain font size and color. Command A allows you to select all of the text. You can change the size by either selecting from the drop down menu an existing size. In my case, I'd previously done this, so 346 points is roughly the right size, except it does not fit into this box. So I'm sizing my box so that it's large enough to actually show it. It inverses the colors because I have the text selected. I want to rotate the entire affair. I move my mouse outside the corner, hold down my shift key to get perfect rectangular or evenly spaced angular steps. And so I'm happy with this. I'm okay except the color isn't quite right yet. I want to actually use a color for this font that is taken from the background. So up here, this is where you select the color at this color patch here. It does not happen down here, but rather up here. I click and rather than picking a color from here, I mouse over the area of the picture and I select sort of a yellow from the picture to match the color of my font to some element in the picture. This looks good to me. Um, the font needs to be set off. It is to um, blend it in with the background. I need to set it off a little bit. I can use layer effects um, by pressing on the FX button. You can, for example, choose a stroke from the drop down menu. It gives you the, the stroke dialog or the layer style dialog. The stroke is activated and selected just adjusting the size of it, you can see how the, the size of the stroke around the outline of the letters increases. I'm also going to add a drop shadow. Clicking here allows you to add a drop shadow effect to the text to offset it nicely from the background. And there we are. I actually want to blend out the, um, or fade the background a little bit into the, well, more into the background by adding a filter. Select the filter, Gaussian Blur, which is located under Blur. Gaussian Blur allows me to make the background somewhat blurry so that it does not interfere with its texture with the foreground images. This is good. I'm also going to fade it a little bit by adding an adjustment layer for brightness and contrast. Just making it a little bit brighter, lowering the contrast a little bit. Just enough to make my foreground images stand out more. I want to add color patches below each of these models that highlights the color and provides the Pantone color name with it. So in order to add a color patch, there are shapes available under the shapes tool, the rectangle tool, rounded rectangle. This is actually what I'm going to use. I want to align things nicely so I can activate an alignment grid by pressing command and then the double quote key or single quote key turns on and off the alignment grid. Now with my rectangle tool I can make it a nice even width like so. The color of this rectangle I want to set. You can set it by double clicking on the color icon in this layer here that is the shape. Double clicking brings up the color dialog. Again, I want to sample from the image, so I move it over the red coat. And I also want to make sure I'm choosing a standard Pantone color. So on this dialog here, I click on color libraries. 
and there are many libraries available and I am in the Pantone solid coded library and it will also give automatically give me the Pantone color that is closest to the color that I have selected so this is Pantone 178C I'm going to add some text that specifies that so I'm switched to the text tool click and drag out over the same area and I start typing after I select a reasonable font size Pantone 176C and this I want to be in black and I also want it moved down so that it's in the middle of the patch the alignment of the text itself within the text box you can change the left center or right alignment with these icons up here so I want it centered and this looks about right so I press the checkbox to make it settle in I want you to have the same box and the same text um, under this model here as well I can either create it again or I could just copy both the text and the shape and I do that by dragging selecting both holding down the shift key and clicking on both and then dragging them to the new um, layer icon the sticky pad note they are already created use my move tool to move the perfect copy which is in exactly in the same place of course the name is not right and the color is not right but I can adjust that by double clicking on this color patch here and selecting inside here and it gives me a different color tone and this is 7416C so I change the text 7416C I want to actually add a little bit of a drop shadow to the patches as well under effects I can choose drop shadow brings up the dialog and I choose sort of visually can add a drop shadow to the box itself in order to apply the same drop shadow to the other box I can hold down the option key and drag the effect itself from one element to another I copy basically the effect and I can also give my two people in this image a drop shadow. I'm going to turn off my alignment grid so it doesn't interfere visually. So holding down the option key, clicking on the drop shadow and dra dragging it to the layer that I want to apply this effect to will allow me to do that. And the drop shadow here as well I drag and bring it down to the other element so both of the people now have drop shadows I have boxes or shapes that have the exact matching Pantone color and the text inside and also the fall is nicely set off so this is basically my final version of this particular project slightly different than the original but not dramatically I have a slightly different color selected depending on where you click inside the image itself it will have slight color variations and this is it as far as uh, creating sort of a display board for uh, illustrating color trends whether those be fashion related or design related or automotive or whatever the theme may be so that is all